All right, you guys are probably tired of all the background information. You guys are probably ready for an actual algorithm. And guess what? Today we're gonna do just that. We're gonna learn our first algorithm. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're gonna be talking about breadth first search, otherwise known as BFS, and it's basically the first algorithm that I learned. So basically, I was in silver, I go to the silver used to go class, and the teacher's like, you guys all know what BFS is, and I'm looking around, and they're like, everybody else is nodding, and I'm like, what? What the heck is BFF? How am I supposed to know that? Well, so you guys won't be in that awkward scenario. Dude, that, was, that, that sucked. Well, so you guys won't be in that awkward scenario. We're gonna learn it right now. And the best way to learn it is by an example. So basically, BFS is a way to traverse a graph, which basically means to look at all the vertices on a graph. Just like, you know, traverse means to walk. It's like walking on a graph across the edge. Breadth for a series means that we're going across the breadth of the graph first. So we're not going deep, as far away from our starting vertex as possible, we're staying as close to the vertex as possible and going outward from there. That probably sounds like a bunch of gibberish because you guys haven't seen an example, so let's do an example first. So let's say that we start at zero, okay? So basically all these nodes want to be processed. We want to get to all these nodes and all of them want to be gotten to, so they all stand in line. So the first guy to stand in line would be our zero, but unfortunately we haven't looked at any of the other nodes so they don't get in line yet. So then, we say, hey, we got a zero, let's look at what he's got going on. And then, once we look at zero, we look at his neighbors. So, zero has a neighbor two, three, five, and four. So, basically what we do, is we've looked at these new nodes, so we add them to our line. And we add them in order of size. So, first come first is two, three goes next, four goes next, five is next. And there we go, we looked at all the neighbors of zero, and now we're done with zero, so we could just cross this boy out. And now, we cross it out from the line as well, and then we move on to the next boy in the line who wants to be looked at. They're all waiting so patiently. So we look at two first. Alrighty, what neighbors of two do we have? We have zero and one, but we already looked at zero, so we don't need to look at it again. So we go to one, and we add one to our line. Alright, we're done with two. Look at three, we already looked at zero, nothing to add to the line here, we're good! So take out three. Four, same thing, get rid of this noob. And then lastly, five has one neighbor, six, and we add that. And then we cross out 5. And then we look at 1, it's done. Look at 6, done. And we'll blam We have traversed our graph. And then basically the order in which we looked at our nodes is called the BFS traversal order. So it would basically be 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 6. That is the BFS order. So what's really going on here? Basically what we have is a queue. This line over here, this line that we wrote all our numbers in is called a queue. And we start by putting our first node into it. And then while the queue still has numbers in it, we look at the first number, we add all its neighbors that we haven't looked at yet into our queue, and then take it out of the list, just like we did over here. So what does this look like in code? So in code we got this. We basically have an adjacency list over here to represent our graph. Then we have a visited array to tell us whether or not we've visited a node yet. And then we have a queue to store a line and then we go into our main method. So we begin by putting our zeroth vertex in the queue. Then while the queue has numbers left in it, we take the first number in the line, we take it out of the line, and then we go through all of its neighbors. And if we haven't visited that neighbor yet, we add it to our queue and say, hey, we visited it. We don't need to add it again to the queue. So cool, we know how to do it in code. We know the concept, but what's the point? Well, let me first show you the first cool thing you can do with BFS. So if we go back to an example, like this boy over here, let's get back to the clear. Let's say we want to find the shortest path from each vertex to zero, such that each edge is length one. Then we would start at zero, and we would say, hey, zero is a distance zero from zero, right? And then we would go through all its neighbors. But all his neighbors are going to be one more distance away from zero than the current one, right? Like two is one away from zero, three is one away from zero, four is one away from zero, five is one away from zero. So you add all of the neighbors to the queue, two, three, four, five. And when we mark them, this time we will mark them with their distance. So remember that visited array I showed you? Instead of being a boolean, we visited or we didn't visit it, it would store the distance to it. And if we didn't visit it at all, we just say the distance is negative 1 and we could change that when we get to it. So we can say, hey, the distance is just 1. 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 And now that we're done with 0, we could just erase that. And then we go to 2. 
and then the only neighbor that we haven't looked at yet is 1. But 1 has to be 1 farther away from 0 than 2 is, so we just do 1 plus another 1, and then we get the distance from 1 to 0 is just 2. And then the same thing, we get rid of all these boys, because they don't have any neighbors, and then we look at 5, and do the same thing for 6 like we did for 1. There's just 2 now. And then we go through the rest, and we take them all. And with Blamo, we already have the distances from each vertex to zero. It's crazy. And there's even more. Yes, that's right, there's more. Even more. There's more that BFS can do for you. In fact, there's something called Flood Fill. The name is not at all redundant. Like, you couldn't tell that it fills things with the flood part and the fill part. Like, completely two different meanings, okay? No, it's, it's just, just redundant. I don't know why they call it that. But, hey, it's still a useful algorithm. So basically, it's run on a 2D grid. Let's say that we fill in a couple of these squares and say we cannot pass through these squares. Alright, and now let's say we start from this vertex and we want to find the distance from all the squares in this graph to this vertex. Sorry, square. I know the difference between a vertex and a square. I, yeah, yeah, I do. So now we just run BFS on this, except instead of having edges like an adjacency list, we just have plus or minus 1 to our x or plus or minus 1 to the y coordinate. So we do this, we try going up one. Hey, that's a block, we can't do anything there. We go right one. Hey, we can do something. So we add it to our Q and we set it to a one because zero plus one is one. And then the same thing for the other neighbors. And then we're done with this one. We already like considered this one. And now we move on to its neighbor. So we look at this boy over here. The only neighbor that's valid is this one. So we do one plus one is two. And we're done with that. And then we look at this one, two, done with that. This one, two, done with that. And then we look at twos. The only neighbor that's valid for this one is this one. So we do two plus one, three. We're done with this one. And then we keep doing that until we're done. Let me show you what it looks like when it's done. See, look, now we have all the squares and their distances from the original square. And we also know which squares we can't reach. For example, if a Yusuko problem asks, could you reach this square? You could just say, hey, we didn't even reach it. So no, we can't. If you ask you what's the distance between the starting point and this point over here, you can immediately say 4. Other applications include like finding cycles, finding reachable nodes in a normal graph, like not just this type of graph, finding shortest paths as I already showed you. There's a lot of applications for BFS, and it's one of the most fundamental things, so once you understand BFS, you're ready to learn more complex algorithms. So that's all I got to talk about for BFS. If you guys want to learn more about BFS, there's a lot of tutorials out there. This is mostly focused on the usical aspect of it. Next time, we'll probably be tackling DFS, the counterpart for BFS. While BFS is breadth for a search, DFS is depth for a search, which means we go as deep as we can and then come back. I'll explain that more in detail next time. So thank you guys so much for watching! As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you guys want me to do anything specific in the Seeds to Go Crash Cards, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and see you guys next time!